Welcome on back to Skippers today. I am going to predict the category winners. It's a little fancy baseball work mixed in with some season predictions. Do not forget to subscribe, join the Discord. Let's get into the categories and those winners. Start off with the home run category. I'm going to go a little off the board here. It could be easy. Aaron Judge, Jordan Alvarez guesses, but I'm going to go with Matt Olson of the Atlanta Braves. Last season, Olson only had 36 home runs, but he had 38 expected home runs. He was in top 4% of the league in max exit velocity average exit velocity, hard hit percentage, as well as barrel rate, and ran a launch angle about 16 degrees on average. Truce Park is an above average park for lefties to hit home runs at, and I think he could get lost in an awesome Braves lineup and has a chance at leading the league in home runs. We go to the runs batted in category. To lead the RBI category, you're going to need people ahead of you on base consistently. That's why I started at this chart of players who had over 400 runners on base when they came to the plate last season. Around the middle of this list, we are going to find our good friend Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with an RBI percentage at only 15%. And what I think was a really down year for Vladdy last season, he hit the lowest of his averages with runners in scoring position compared to runners on base and the base is empty compared to 2021 where he hit 315 with runners in scoring position, which was the best of those three same categories. He has the right team. He has George Springer, Bo Bichette ahead of him. Um, and I just think he can get back to those 2021 numbers, get the ball in the air. I mean, it's not Vladimir ground out junior anymore. I think he'll be able to hit some more fly balls, get some runs driven in as well. I don't think the RBI percentage will be as low as it was last season. So to lead the RBI category, I'm going to go with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Let's go to the batting average category. For the leader in the batting average category, I'm not going to go with one of the big power guys, but someone who impressed me with their contact skills in 2022. To find the next guy to lead in batting average, I'm going to look at what made Luis Arias so good last season, what makes him so good at having an elite batting average. Luis Arias has elite zone contact percentage and elite contact percentage in general, as well as a low swing strike rate to go along with a good swing percentage. Percentage. Someone who is very similar to Arise's skill set and my pick to lead the batting average category is going to be Stephen Kwan of the Guardians. Last year, his zone contact percentage was 95.4%, while Arise was at 96%. He had a swing strike rate at only 3.1% compared to Arise's 2.4%, but Kwan's swing percentage was five points lower than Arise. I think he'll start to swing a lot more this season and be a dark horse to lead this category. Won't choose him as a dark horse. I'm going to choose him as the leader of the batting average category, Stephen Kwan of the Cleveland Guardians. As we move on to stolen bases, I have a nice little look here. I think it could be pretty chalky, but I took myself to the sprint speed leaderboards in the 80-foot raw split times. At the top of this list, there is a rookie in Arizona, and his name is Corbin Carroll. I compared Corbin Carroll's 90-foot splits to the three top leaders in stolen bases last season. So I compared him to Tommy Edmond, Jorge Mateo, and Cedric Mullins in a race to 90 feet. And on average, Corbin Carroll would win that race by four and a half feet over those three. Carroll has the best 80-foot split time in the league by almost a full tenth of a second over Bubba Thompson. Again, I choose 80 feet. You take, what, a 10-foot lead at first base, so you're running 80 feet to get to second instead of 90, as well as a top sprint speed of almost 31 feet per second. Corbin Carroll only stole two bases in 32 games in the big leagues, but he had 31 steals in 91 games in the minors last season. There's no faster player in all of baseball, so I will be taking Corbin Carroll to lead the stolen base category. To the runs category we go, and when I looked at the runs category, I wanted to look at three things. Good batting average, elite speed to score from everywhere, and a good lineup behind him to drive him in. I landed on what I think will be the le best leadoff hitter in potentially all of baseball this season in Trey Turner and the Philadelphia Phillies. Trey Turner has an expected batting average in the 90th percentile, a sprint speed in the 99th percentile, and moves to a team that scored the seventh most runs in baseball last season. He'll be an elite table setter, and I like him to lead the runs category with guys like Schwarber, Real Muto, and eventually Bryce Harper back to drive him in. So Trey Turner to lead the runs category. As we move on to the pitching categories, I'm just going to do three wins, saves, and strikeouts as well. We could do qualified, I guess, for ERA and whip, but I'm just going to go with these three categories. So let's get to the wins category. Last season, shockingly, it was Kyle Wright that led the league in wins with 21. What I see to think about who I want to take this year is someone who's going to go deep into his starts and obviously on a good team. There's a pitcher as well on that same Philadelphia Phillies team who has thrown 385 innings the last two seasons. Last year had an expected ERA of 274 and a FIP of 258, as well as being the pitcher of record in 24 of his starts. It didn't turn out too well for him, but Aaron Nola went 11-13 and 13 in those 24 starts, so he is going to be the one I picked to bounce back and Aaron Nola to lead the, the whole league and wins this season. On the surface, his numbers weren't incredible, 
but he's been super solid, super durable, and a very good pitcher for a long time. And in a contract year, I expect big things from Aaron Nola, so I believe he will win the wins category. We had to strikeouts, and Garrett Cole has unfortunately been the king of the strikeout categories for multiple years. So I'm not going to choose him. I'm not going to choose Corbin Burns, probably the two most chalky picks you could have here. I'm going to go choose someone who had five less starts than Garrett Cole last season, I think 40 less innings pitch, and he starts the season with some question marks due to some shoulder injuries last year, but he's been super solid in his spring this season. The velocity is back. I'm going to choose Shane McClanahan to lead the league in strikeouts. He had the eighth best K per nine amongst qualified starters last season at 10.5 per nine. For the, again, I think the velocity is back. He looks solid in his solid spring stuff. As long as they don't limit his innings, which I don't expect they will, I think the Rays are going to be going on a deep run, and he is going to be a big reason for that. So Shane McClanahan to lead the league in strikeouts. Finally, let's get to some saves. I don't want to go with the chalk with Emmanuel Classe. I mean, his numbers are incredible. There's nothing bad you can say about him. So I'm going to go with someone else who seems primed for a bounce back in the saves category, and that is Josh Hader of the Padres. I think he had a lot of weird things go on last season. I know he had some family issues, but he had an expected ERA, two full runs less than his actual D uh, ERA, and then a half-decent FIP as well. He's going to be the closer on a really good Padres team who could honestly be up there for leading the league and wins this season. So if they put him in a good spot to be the closer, they put him in positive situations again if you're leading by three or less going into the ninth you're probably gonna have josh Hader coming into this game so i think my choice to lead the saves category this season is going to be josh Hader. thank you everyone for watching let me know who you guys have winning each of these categories do not forget to subscribe join the discord and i will see you guys tomorrow